good afternoon everybody welcome to this session of uh, structural engineering design and detailing uh, as we had seen the uh, in the previous class we had seen the design of the plate girder i had also explained you all the different elements which attach to the plate girder uh, and even the uh, what are the vertical stiffness and what are the horizontal stiffness when are they provided we had also seen that uh, we had seen the importance of that also so basically today we'll be seeing the design of the vertical stiffener where is it provided what will be the spacing of the uh, vertical stiffener how do we design the vertical stiffener all that will be seen today let us first see let us just uh, come up with a recap uh, what is a vertical stiffener as you, uh, hope you all can recollect uh, uh, if this is your uh, plate girder vertical stiffness are basically provided in between at a distance we'll be seeing what are, what should be the distance and where it should be provided so this is your vertical stiffener even this is your vertical stiffener so basically vertical stiffeners are also called as inter so basically vert uh, vertical stiffeners are also called as intermediate stiffeners now why are they provided why are the vertical stiffeners provided as i had told you if uh, the loading is very high here loading coming on to the if this is the loading that is coming on to the plate girder as we know the loading which comes on to the plate girder it is uniformly distributed load sometimes what happens the loading is very high in those conditions we will have to provide a vertical stiffener here so that it can resist buckling also it resists buckling if this uh, intermediate stiffener is not provided though there is heavy load coming on to the plate girder in that situation what happens is the, uh, there are high chances of this uh, uh, plate girder buckling away the, uh, the plate girder tends to bend in the vertical direction so in those conditions what we do is we provide these vertical stiffeners they are, they are also called as intermediate stiffeners and they are provided at a different spacing which will be calculating it in the uh, in the later stages so anyway if these vertical stiffeners are provided at the corners just remember this if they are provided at the corner if this is provided at the corner either on the this side or be it on the this side also this is provide this is known as end bearing stiffener end bearing stiffener this provided this vertical stiffener which is provided at the corner is called as end bearing stiffener basically it is also provided uh, this is also provided to resist uh, buckling also these vertical stiffeners are provided so that they uh, to resist buckling basically they give buckling strength to the plate girder so today we'll be seeing how the design of the plate girder will be taking place see this uh, uh, vertical stiffeners they might be provided depending on the situation and depending on the need they will be provided on one side of the plate girder or on the two sides of the plate girder also see this is the front view what you are seeing basically this will be an i section it will look like this as we know this uh, plate girder will look like an i section what will happen is this will this will look like this the your intermediate uh, your uh, intermediate vertical stiffener whatever you are providing it will look like this it will uh, basically we are seeing the front view so this will come a little bit outside so today we'll be seeing the design of the vertical stiffener what is the what are the steps involved in the uh, design of a vertical stiffener also it might be provided on one side of the plate girder or on both sides of the plate girder and they are provided at a distance uh, which will be calculated according to the code book we'll be seeing the different steps involved in design of the vertical uh, uh, stiffener as i had told you when uh, heavy load uh, comes on to the plate girder and the loading is very intense and sometimes there are uh, point loads also acting here sometimes what happens is point loads also act here these point loads also act here in those conditions what happens is we need to go for some we need to provide some vertical stiffener also so that the plate girder shouldn't buckle down because uh, because heavy intensity of load acts upon this plate girder it is very necessary we should provide a vertical stiffener and then uh, when it is uh, larger than that also if the vertical stiffener cannot resist the loads at those conditions we also go for horizontal stiffener these are the horizontal stiffeners that are provided here so 
so these are these horizontal stiffeners are provided so that it can resist the shear in the web it can resist the shear shear also takes place shear also acts in the uh, plate girder to resist that shear we go for horizontal stiffeners here so basically the importance of uh, intermediate stiffener or the vertical stiffener and uh, horizontal stiffener is very clear intermediate or the vertical stiffener it resists buckling it gives buckling strength and the horizontal stiffener it provides it resists the shear so if these are provided with uh, at a proper distance they are they gives the strength to the plate girder and whatever intensity of load comes it will be able to bear that today we'll be seeing step by steps what are the steps involved in designing of the vertical uh, uh, vertical stiffener uh, one by one we'll be seeing that and as per the code what does the irc indian road congress uh, uh, will be requiring eight, uh, 800 of 2007 uh, steel structures table uh, code book so what does it say about the design of the intermediate stiffener we'll be seeing that today let us see one by one step uh, that is involved in design of this uh, vertical stiffener hope if you all remember in the design of the plate girder what we had seen we had different steps first step what we had seen the design of the plate girder was we used to see what is the udl coming onto the plate girder next we used to see what is the span and then after giving uh, the uh, after getting these given data that is the udl coming onto it or whatever the point load coming onto it next we used to see what is the span length after that w and l we had got then we used to calculate the bending moment what is the maximum bending moment as i had told you for simply supported uh, beam the maximum bending moment uh, bending moment is WL square by 8 okay this was the MU max this was the maximum bending moment and maximum shear force was WL by 2 so we used to calculate this here now as we had seen the design steps of the plate girder the maximum bending moment was WL square by 8 and the maximum shear force what we used to get is that was WL by 2 okay as you know the W is the load that comes on to the plate girder that is the UDL and L is the length of the span after uh, calculating this that is MU and VU then we used to go for design of depth of the plate girder in the same way we'll be calculating all those steps here also we'll be seeing design of the depth of the web also depth of the web so D was given by the formula what you what we had seen there MU into K by uh, FY to the power of 0 0.33 so as I had told you we'll uh, MU is a constant value and we'll have to assume it in one problem we had assumed it as 150 and in one problem we had assumed it as 180 if we can assume it as 100 also so from there we'll be getting the depth of the web then we used to see the thickness of the web thickness of the web TW was given by MU by K uh, MU by K square into Y but to the power of 0 0.33 there we used to get the thickness of the web also so we'll be finding out the depth of the web and the thickness of the web next we used to find out the uh, uh, thickness of the flange and the breadth of the flange uh, the th uh, breadth of the flange was uh, one point uh, one third of the depth of the web okay there we used there we used to calculate the breadth of the flange after getting the breadth of the flange then we used to calculate the area of the flange from that we used to calculate the thickness of the flange finally we had calculated the breadth uh, depth of the web uh, and the thickness of the web and breadth of the flange and the thickness of the flange after getting all this now this this uh, in the initial stages we'll be deciding all that after that we'll be design, designing uh, we'll be finalizing what should be the outstand we'll be seeing step by step here first i'll start with i just wanted you all to remember what we had done in the previous class okay after getting uh, designing the depth and the thickness of the web and breadth and uh, thickness of the flange then what what we used to do is we used to check for shear and we used to check for uh, moment capacity also if it is uh, uh, safe in shear uh, we used to proceed further or else we used to change the thickness of the web yeah. next what we used to we used to do we did was uh, we checked the moment capacity of the flange also after we uh, we had calculated if it was uh, safe and moment capacity also then uh, we used to proceed we had proceeded further if it was failing there then we had to change the size of the flange anyway after that what we did was we did curtailment as i had told you what is curtailment basically curtailment is that concept in where the highest bending moment as it acts at the center will try to curtail the plates as a thick one thick single plate cannot be uh, uh, placed uh, it is not practically possible so we uh, just uh, convert it into number of plates that is two three four plates whatever required as per the thickness and we attach it we weld it 
so these plate which are very thick they can be cut at the ends as the maximum bending moment is coming at the center after curtailment then we went for the uh, connection between the flange and the web and next we directly went to the weld so basically these were the steps here most of the steps are same in both the in this also but still some steps are still required i'll be telling you in which page uh, what are the steps involved in designing of vertical stiffener we'll be seeing one by one let us see what are the different steps involved in designing of vertical stiffener so as i have told you uh, the first step what is involved is in the step design of the vertical stiffener is we'll have to uh, check uh, let us start with the first step in the first step as i had told you uh, given data will be there we'll have to find out the depth of the web that is dw thickness of the web breadth of the flange and thickness of the flange as i had told you how we'll have to calculate the depth of the web i don't want to go in uh, detail in all this because we had already seen in the previous uh, questions uh, we had solved two problems how to design the depth of the web how to design thickness of the web breadth of the flange and thickness of the flange as i had told you we'll we'll be calculating the maximum bending moment that is mu is equal to w l square by 8 and maximum shear force that will be w l by 2 from that next step what we'll be doing we'll be there we'll be uh, calculating depth of the web dw is equal to as i had told you mu into k by fy uh, mu into k by fy fy is the yield stress of the steel to the power of 0 0.33 we'll be getting the depth now what is thickness of the web thickness of the web will be mu by k square into fy to the power of 0 0.33 you'll be getting thickness of the web once we get that we can get the what is the breadth of the flange breadth of the flange is one third times of depth of the web so we'll be getting this also now thickness of the web next we'll be calculating area of the flange after getting area of the flange as you know area is thickness into breadth that is length into breadth from there as we know breadth of the flange and we'll be calculating area of the flange we we can also calculate thickness of the flange after calculating all this now we'll have to see what is the outstand what is the outstand required we'll be seeing that in the next step now in the next step we'll be deciding the spacing of the stiffener where should we provide the spacing of the stiffener we'll be seeing that in the next step here let us see in the second step deciding the spacing spacing of the stiffener and that a condition has been given there a condition has been given there in the clause a condition has been given there in page 63 if you see page 63 let us see from the code book in page 63 what has been given here in page 63 uh, as i had told you all of you all should uh, carry the code book that is is 800 of uh, 2007 you can see here in page 63 it says uh, what does the spacing deciding the spacing of the stiffener the condition says when what should it be 3d should be greater than or equal to c greater than equal to d this is the condition what we'll have to satisfy here you can see here this is page 63 and clause number 8.6.1 clause it is clause 8.6.1 please see here see what does the condition say deciding the spacing of the stiffener how do we uh, decide on what uh, where do we place the stiffener that is what that is main important now you might be uh, seeing what does this mean 3d should be greater than or equal to c and that should be c should be greater than or equal to d this means that whatever depth we have calculated depth of the web depth of the web it says that c this is the spacing this is the spacing where should we provide the intermediate stiffener where should we provide the vertical stiffener that is very denoted by c this d is the depth of the web so whatever we select here whatever we select here c that should be less than or equal to three times of d and greater than or equal to d just imagine i'll give you an example if d what i have calculated is 1200 
D I have calculated is 1200. So C should be greater than D. C should be greater than D. What does that mean? And what does this say? At least it should be three times greater than 3D. This should be less than 3D. So if I take 12 uh, D, I have got it as 1200. I'll be taking C has at least 1500. It should be greater than C should be greater than D. That is what it means. That is what it means. And whatever I am taking here, this C, this 3D should be greater than what I am taking here. You can just see here, I will write it like this. And this is 1500. 3 times of D, this will be 3600. So, this is satisfying this condition. D, see my 1500 is greater than 1200. And 3D should be greater than C, it says. 3600 is greater than 1500. Always remember, once we have calculated the depth of the web, you, you have to increase that uh, uh, spacing, that is C, more than what is the depth of the web you are getting. So example, I have just told you, if depth of the web is 1200, I will just increase it. It should be more than the depth of the web. I have taken it as 1500 and it should be less than 3 times of D. So this is 1500 is less than of 3 times of D. So hope this is clear in on page 63 in the clause 6. 8.61, 8.6.1. It has been mentioned here. What will be the C? What which, what should be the intermediate stiffener? It has been uh, uh, decided here, yeah, as the code says that. We'll be seeing what is the next step here. We'll be seeing what is the next step. Uh, this spacing has been decided. Basically, what we have calculated here is we can just understand here what we have calculated. So basically, we have seen this. What should be this distance? from here to here what should be the distance that is C okay now what is the next what we'll have to see is the next step we'll have to decide the outstand of the stiffener outstand of the stiffener please don't get confused here what does the calculate the outstand I'll just explain you all what is the third step will be calculate the outstand of the stiffener outstand of the stiffener this is given in page 65 it is given in page 65 first try to understand what is outstand see this is your vertical stiffener it is provided at a distance from the edge about c whatever we have got that is we have calculated from here from this clause now what is outstand mean see you are seeing this front view you are seeing this front view it looks like that but uh, if you see close by something something is coming outside something is coming outside this is called as outstand this thickness you are seeing from the front and it looks like a simple line it looks like a simple uh, vertical uh, uh, scale or something but if you come close by and you change the cross section this is the outstand how much out should this uh, vertical stiffener come out how much out should it come out so that is called as outstand it is given in page 65 you should uh, you can check from the code book in page 65 it says in page 65 it says outstand of web stiffness unless the outer edge is continuously stiffened the outstand from the face of the web should not exceed should not exceed 20 tq epsilon 20 times of epsilon when the outstand of the web is between 14 TQ epsilon and 20 TQ epsilon, then the stiffener design should be on the basis of the core section with an outstand of 14 TQ epsilon where TQ is the thickness of the stiffener. So basically what the code says that it should be between 14 TQ epsilon to 20 TQ epsilon. And it further says that uh, then the stiffener design should be on the basis of the core section with an outstand of 14 TQE where TQ is the thickness of the stiffener. TQ, this is the thickness of the stiffener. Okay, TQ is the thickness of the stiffener. The outstand will be decided between these values 14 TQE to 20 TQE. But it says that minimum this should be taken. This should be taken. 14 into thickness of the stiffener. Whatever thickness you are taking, you will have to either adopt it as 8 mm or 10 mm, whatever you are taking it as. You will just check it here. 14 TQ times of epsilon. This is the minimum what you will have to provide it. Nothing more than 20 TQ. TQ is the thickness of the stiffener. So this is the 
the third step what you will have to follow it first step you have decided you have calculated depth thickness breadth of line thickness of line next after calculating the depth of the web then you have calculated the spacing of the stiffener that is c that should be more than d after calculating this then we had seen what is outstand as i had told you oh, don't get confused with outstand you are seeing the front view it looks like that but something is projecting outside what is this thickness he is asking that is projecting outside that is called as outstand and it uh, should be calculated on the basis of, of it is given in page 65 it says it should be between 14 tq epsilon to 20 tq epsilon but tq is the thickness of the stiffener so this is the third step what we'll have to follow then we'll see what is in the next step next step fourth step what will it uh, uh, in the next step, we'll be calculating the moment of inertia of the stiffener, which has been given in the page 66 and 67. Always remember that the TQ should be minimum, TQ should be 8 mm, 8 mm. This should be minimum, not less than this. So in the next step, what we'll be doing is we'll be finding out the moment of inertia, moment of inertia, which has been given in the page, calculating moment of inertia. which is given in page 67, 66 and page 67. Let us see what has been given in the page 66 and page 67. What does the code say in page 66? See, it is given here the minimum stiffener that has to be provided. If C by D, you can see it is given in clause 8.7.2.4, clause 8.7.2.4. We'll have to calculate the moment of inertia. What does the code say here? You can see here, transverse web stiffeners not subject to external loads or moments should have a second moment of inertia that is is it should have a second moment of inertia called as is okay about the center line of the web if the stiffeners are on both sides of the web see if the stiffeners are provided i had told you sometimes the stiffeners are provided on one side of the web and sometimes on both sides of the web the clause says that if the stiffeners are on both sides of the web and about the face of the web if single stiffener on only one side of the web is used such that if single stiffener is used such that if 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 c by d is greater than or equal to root 2 if c by d c i have told you this is the spacing of the stiffener you can see a c by d is greater than or equal to 2 then is then moment of inertia then is is it should be greater than or equal to 0 0.75 d t w cube c if c by d we'll have to next after when we have to calculate the moment of inertia first thing what we'll have to see is first we'll see this clause if c by d is greater than or equal to root 2 greater than or equal to root 2 then we, the moment of inertia will be 0 0.75 into depth of the web into thickness of the web cube if you can see in the, uh, in the next clause the continuing clause if c by d if c by d is less than root 2 is less than root 2 then is should be greater than or equal to 1.5 d cube T w cube by c square you can just see here if we have seen my spacing of stiffener by the depth of the web is greater than or equal to root 2 then i'll provide this moment of inertia is is equal to great it should be greater than or equal to 0 0.75 times of d into t w cube if my c by d is c by spacing of stiffener by depth of the web is less than root 2 then i'll go for this moment of inertia that is is should be greater than or equal to 1.5 d cube tw cube by c square it specifies what is d d is the depth of the web as i had told you tw is minimum required web thickness for spacing using tension field action so this is the minimum required web thickness which we have calculated already here this is thickness of the web which we have calculated we have all these things just substitute the value you will get what is the moment of inertia so this is what we will be doing in the fourth uh, point calculating the moment of inertia here
सो दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया इज इज दिस इज द रिक्वायर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया द लीस्ट मूवमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया विल बी गेटिंग फ्रॉम हियर लेट अस सी व्हाट इज द प्रोवाइडेड मूवमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया व्हाट इज द प्रोवाइडेड इट इज गिवन बाय आई प्रोवाइडेड आई प्रोवाइडेड इज इक्वल टू टी क्यू डी क्यू बाई ट्वेल्व माइनस ऑफ टी क्यू टी डब्ल्यू क्यूब बाई ट्वेल्व यू कैन सी आई प्रोवाइडेड आई प्रोवाइडेड इज टी क्यू डी क्यूब बाई ट्वेल्व माइनस टी क्यू टी डब्ल्यू क्यूब बाई ट्वेल्व वॉट इज दिस टी क्यू वी हैव गॉट इट फ्रॉम हियर टी क्यू एट एम एम एट लीस्ट मिनिमम वील हैव टू सी एंड वॉट इज डी क्यूब दिस इज द होल डेप होल डेप you must have you must you you can uh, remember uh, while calculating the moment of inertia of a plate girder also we had seen bd cube by 12 and minus of small bd cube by 12 this is the same thing what we are doing it here so tq is got from here that is the minimum uh, thickness of the stiffener and d is the whole depth and this tq is the same thickness of the web will be just calculated so this is i provided so i provided should be greater than i provided should be greater than the calculated moment of inertia what moment of inertia we are providing it should be greater than this so i provided should be greater than is i should be greater than is i provided should be greater than is so this is what we will be doing in the fourth point just remember it is very clear given data is given depth of the web thickness of the web breadth of the flange thickness of the flange we have calculated from the previous uh, questions also what we had done then we are seeing the spacing of the stiffener that is c as i had told you it should be greater than d and outstand of the stiffener at least we should take from 14 tqe to 20 tqe minimum we can take this also tq minimum thickness will be taking it as 8 mm till here it is clear then we are calculating the moment of inertia the clause says in the page 66 and 67 if c by d is greater than or equal to root 2 this is the moment of inertia what we will calculate that is 0.75 t d depth of the web thickness of the web cube if c by d is less than root 2 uh, the moment of inertia that what we will be providing it should be greater than or equal to 1.5 depth of web cube thickness of web cube by c square okay this is i provided this is i what we have calculated this is i calculated now i provided that is tq d cube by 12 tq is the thickness uh, minimum thickness of the stiffener and d cube is the whole depth and this is tq thickness of the web cube by 12 so i provided should be greater than is this is the fourth point next we'll be seeing what is in the fifth point see the next step let us see the next step we'll be checking uh, for the buckling check for buckling of stiffener we'll be seeing whether the stiffener is resisting buckling or not because the basic intention of providing the stiffener is it should resist buckling so the fifth point will will be check for buckling of of stiffener now this is uh, given in page 67 you can check page 67 here you can just see page 67 buckling check on intermediate transverse web stiffener this is in clause 8.7.2.5 see it is clearly mentioned here buckling check on intermediate transverse web stiffeners stiffeners not subjected to external loads or moments should be checked for a stiffener force that is given by fq is equal to v minus of v c r by gamma m 0 it should be less than or equal to f q d okay it says that stiffeners not subjected to external loads or moments should be checked for a stiffener force we'll have to check whether it can resist buckling or no so that is given by fq is equal to v minus vcr by gamma m0 which should be less than or equal to fqd now fqd is design resistance f q d is design resistance v is factored shear force and vcr shear buckling resistance
See what does it say? FQD is design resistance of intermediate stiffener. Design resistance of intermediate stiffener. V, V is force factored shear force factored shear force adjacent to the stiffener that is VU which we have calculated in the first step and VCR that is shear buckling resistance of web panel designed without using tension tension field action so VCR also we'll be calculating it now after calculating this uh, we have calculated the buckling strength once it uh, is safe uh, it is safe against buckling then we'll see the connection between the intermediate stiffener connection uh, design of connection between web and stiffener this is the last step which will be seen design of connection between web and stiffener This is the last step we will be seeing the connection between the web and the stiffener. How we will connect it? It is again given in the page 67. You can check here in the page 67. Page 67 clause 8.7.2.6. See it says that here in the clause 8.7.2.6 intermediate transfer stiffeners not subjected to external loading should be connected to the web so it should be connected to the web so as to withstand a shear between each component of the stiffener and the web it should be able to withstand the shear between the each component of the web it says like that in kilonewton per mm for not less than for not less than tw square by 5 bs tw is web thickness tw is web thickness And what is BS? Outstand width. So, for stiffness subjected to external loading, the shear between web and stiffener due to such loading has to be added to the above value. So, this is what it says. So, this will be shear force is equal to tw square by thickness of the web thickness of the web square by 5 into bs bs is outstand width of the stiffener so this is the last step we'll be deciding between the connection between web and stiffener just recollect from the step one given data is given udl is given span of the girder will be given to you and then we'll be finding out breadth of the web and the thickness of the web flange of the web and thickness of the web after that what we'll do we'll be seeing the spacing of the stiffener with uh, which is denoted by c and it should be greater than depth of the web and it should be less than three times of d after that what we'll be seeing we'll be seeing outstand of the stiffener which has been given in a clause which says it should be at least minimum 14 tq epsilon to 20 tq epsilon tq is the minimum thickness of the uh, vertical stiffener that should be taken at least as 8 mm after that what we'll be doing is next step we'll be seeing the moment of inertia it is given in page 65 let us finish so so hope all these steps are clear i request you to go through this uh, step so that in the next class we'll be deciding the we'll be doing a problem related to the vertical stiffener hope this is clear i request you to subscribe to my channel as well as i request you to please go through this subject so that if you have any questions you can uh, uh, you can ask me in the comment section i'll answer it to you thanks a lot for this session